Hey everyone, one of our subscribers recently cracked full stack Java developer interview at Capgemini and Pipro. I already created one video on her Capgemini interview experience and she wanted to share all these experiences anonymously. In this video, I am gonna share everything about her Vipro experience, what she shared with me. Okay. Guys, if you have recently attended any interview, please fill your contact details in the form linked in the description below and we will reach out to you. Either we will show your name, photo and LinkedIn or share your experience anonymously. We are also giving gift cards to those who are sharing their experiences. So go and fill the form now. And also don't forget to subscribe to catch more videos like this one. So now let's get started. So she basically applied through Nokri.com and the role was open for 3 to 7 years of experience. Candidates and after applying he received a phone call from HR and HR asked basic questions like notice period, year of experience, expected salary etc etc. Okay, so here in this video I am gonna discuss technical interviews questions one by one with the explanation. Okay. So basically interviewer asked Core Java, Spring Boot, Database, Coding questions. Okay. So first question was a generic one like introduce yourself and the second question was about project discussion, roles and responsibilities. Okay. Then interviewer started asking about Java 8 features and their hands on experiences. So Java 8 introduced several new features like Lambda expressions for concise and flexible coding, stream APIs for efficient data processing, the new date time API for better date and time management and many more. Okay. Then he asked detailed explanation about lambda expression. So basically lambda expression allows us to write short block of code that we can pass around in our programs. It's commonly used with the functional interfaces to simplify our code, especially when using collections or streams. Okay. Then he asked one interesting question and that was how can you use a lambda expression to instantiate a functional interface? So we can use a lambda expression to instantiate a functional interface by providing a simple, concise implementation of abstract method declared in the interface. Okay. Then interviewer asks, can an interface be considered functional if it has multiple default methods? So yes, an interface can still be considered functional if it has multiple default methods as long as there is only one abstract method. Default methods have implementation so they don't affect the functional interface status. Okay. Next the interviewer asked about stream API and do we really need this cannot we work on traditional coding only. So the stream API in Java 8 helps manage collections more easily by allowing us to perform operations like filtering, sorting and mapping with less code and in a more readable way. Whereas traditional coding works fine, but using the stream API can lead to more efficient and cleaner code, especially for complex data manipulation. Okay. Moving on, interviewer asks, how do you handle null pointer exception? So we can do null checks, use optional class and annotations like not null can also be used. Then he asks questions on design patterns like factory design pattern singleton design pattern and abstract design pattern. So basically factory design pattern lets us create objects without specifying the exact class of objects that will be created. Singleton design patterns ensures a class has only one instance and provides a global point of access to it and abstract factory pattern provides an interface for creating families of related or dependent objects without specifying their concrete classes. Okay. Then interviewer asked two interesting follow up questions on design pattern. First was suppose you are using a factory pattern to create object in a multi threaded environment. How would you ensure that the factory itself is thread safe without impacting the performance of object creation? So basically to ensure thread safety in a factory pattern without impacting performance, we can use the double checked locking pattern with a volatile field in singleton factories. This approach minimizes the synchronizations overhead. Okay. And the second question was give two, three scenarios where we can use singleton design pattern. So creating one database connection pool, one logging service that handles all logs and common cache 
across whole application are some scenarios of singleton class before moving ahead i would like to share one important thing if you are not able to crack your interviews then you can check our interview preparation kit it has helped thousands of candidates in cracking their interviews in this we give the job support and referrals as well basically this kit has four parts the first part is complete interview preparation material this contains 16 documents step by step with practice quizzes where all the content is organized and available in one place the second part is two real enterprise projects one based in sweden and the other based in the usa there will be video explanation prototype source code pdf documents and quizzes for each project if someone already has projects and they can take this as a reference and prepare accordingly third part is lifetime one on one doubt session for all your doubts on projects preparation material or any other guidance the fourth part is job support and referrals for the deserving candidates okay i have provided the link to get this in the below description please check out this as it may help a lot in cracking your interviews so now moving to our interview questions next he asked about circuit breaker design pattern in the microservices so the circuit breaker packet pattern in microservices stops calls to a service when it fails preventing further overload and this allowed the service time to recover then he asked a follow-up question on the circuit breaker and the question was how would you configure a circuit breaker for a service that shows periodic spikes in failure rates so one of the ways to configure is setting a higher failure threshold and a shorter reset timeout okay then he asked a difference between comparable and comparator so comparable defines a default sorting for objects by using the compare to method within the class itself whereas a comparator allows defining multiple sorting strategies outside the objects class through the compare method in separate classes okay next he asks the difference between final finally and finalize so final is a keyword to declare a variable that cannot be changed a method that cannot be overridden or a class that cannot be subclassed finally is a block that executes after a try catch to handle cleanup regardless of whether an exception was thrown and finalize is a method called by the garbage collector on an object when garbage collection determines that there are no more references to the object okay then interviewer started asking spring boot related questions so first he asked what's the difference between spring and spring boot advantages of a spring boot and what are the ways to create spring boot application so basically spring is a framework for java applications whereas spring boot makes spring easier with automatic setup some advantages of spring boot are quick setup minimal configuration and built-in server and spring initializer spring boot cli and ide supports are some of the ways to create spring boot application okay then he asked about spring boot application annotation so this is a key annotation in the spring boot that enables auto configuration component scanning and configuration management it combines three annotations configuration annotation enable auto configuration annotation and component scan annotation then interviewer asked how can we customize or exclude auto configuration while using this spring boot application annotation in order to customize or exclude we can use exclude parameter inside spring boot application annotation okay next he asked what are the best practices for optimizing the performance of a spring boot application so enable caching optimize database queries use asynchronous processing minimize bean creation and optimize memory are some of the ways for optimizing the performance of a spring boot application then he asked how do you handle exception in your spring boot project so in a spring boot project exceptions are handled using controller advice and exceptional handle controller advice applies globally across controllers whereas exceptional handler is used to handle specific exceptions okay then he asked can you walk through the process of creating and using custom exceptions in any spring boot application so basically in order to create custom exceptions first define a class extending runtime exception throw the exception in services or controllers and handle it globally using controller advice and exceptional handler annotations okay then he asked how you would design an exception hierarchy in a large spring boot project to improve maintainability and error tracking so we can basically design an exception hierarchy by creating a base custom exception like application exception for all app specific errors then derive specialized exceptions like service exception and database exception 
This structure helps organize errors, making tracking and maintenance easier. Next, he asked, do you know how can we handle exceptions from asynchronous methods in Spring Boot? So basically in Spring Boot to handle exceptions from asynchronous methods, we can use async annotation method with a custom async uncaught exception handler. We can implement the handler by overriding the handle uncaught exception method to capture and process exceptions that occurs in async task. Okay. Then interviewer asks, how do you map exceptions to different HTTP status codes in a RESTful Spring Boot application? And also provide an example. So we can map exceptions to different HTTP status code using exceptional handler with response status or by returning a response entity. Response status directly sets the status code while a response entity allows more flexibility for customizing both status and body content. Okay. Then he asked about CI CD pipelines and the best deployment strategies. So basically CI CD pipelines automate the process of building, testing and deploying code changes. Continuous integration ensures code is integrated frequently and tested automatically. Continuous deployment automates the release process. The best deployment strategies are blue green deployment, canary deployment and rolling deployment. Moving on, he asked about the advantages of microservices and how do you make communication between microservices. So microservices offer scalability, flexibility in technology, fault isolation and faster development. For communication, microservices commonly use REST APIs, GRBC or message broker like Kafka to ensure reliable asynchronous integration between services. Then interviewer asked a stream API coding question and the question was write a stream API code to remove duplicates from the list of a string. So I have provided a solution link of this question below in the description. You can check that. So guys, this is all about Vipro interview experience and don't forget to check the interview preparation kit below in the description. Bye bye.